that he thought in effect he could do it by uh, 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 providing it couldn't be used to discriminate and that he would get as close to it as he could. When this question came up, the individuals in the committee, uh, some of them told me about what others were saying, and it was beginning to appear to be uh, uh, interpreted by some of the newspapers as bringing together a younger group of tidings. And uh, you know, you've read about these stories in the past, and that uh, one of the senators was calling certain senators up and saying, I understand you're not for this because you don't like me, and kind of putting them on the spot that way, and kind of the leader, too. So I told the Attorney General I was going to say at a press conference that I was against the poll tax. I wanted to get rid of it. I'd done everything I could. I'd gone further in this bill than anybody had ever gone to Congress before for the Negroes. I'd gone, I'd passed the, the last bill for them, and I, I'd instructed him to go as far as he could within uh, his constitutional uh, 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 limits. And so he said, fine. Now, he feels uh, that uh, this is going to mess up the bill. I don't know enough about the details. I've told him to go back again and, and uh, sit down with them and try to point out the, the uh, procedures. And uh, we just can't have Joe Rao. Uh, if I go to follow him instead of the attorney general, I'm going to get in pretty bad shape because he's not that uh, good a lawyer. And uh, I would hope that we could find something that, uh, that men like Katzenbach and y'all could uh, agree on that would, uh, uh, would and Mansfield, that would uh, get us over the hump because uh, uh, that is not the real core of the bill and not with four states involved. He thinks that he can knock it out pretty quick with them. Uh, and I'd hate to lose the whole bill on account of it, or I'd hate to have uh, the public interpret that we were a bunch of kids fighting among ourselves. And I'm willing to move as far as a human being can. I have the same views that you do, and I think I'm doing more for those Negro groups than anybody's ever done for them. No question. And I think they just got off kind of on a jag here, uh, and. Uh, you ought to try to pull them into some unified action, or else we'll be like the Dominican Republic. We'll, uh, we'll have a party that's uh, split uh, half and half, and really there's no leader. They pay no attention to their president. They don't follow the attorney general. They go, well, part Mansfield goes this way, and some of them go that way, and the attorney general goes another way, and we can't, over the long run, win that way. Now, I don't feel strongly about it. I don't feel that uh, uh, I'm against it. I want to get rid of it. I want to do what any good lawyer. Now, this man's been Bobby's lawyer, and he's been Teddy's lawyer, and he's been my lawyer, and they asked me to keep him, and I have kept him, and I'm following what he says. I'm giving him no directions, I'm giving him no instructions, I just told him to do the best job he could in the interest of the Negroes. And he, uh, I believe, is genuinely sincere and competent. Uh, he tells me they're telling all kinds of stories on him up there that, uh, that he thinks that the other bill might be all right and so forth. But if you could, if uh, the other boys could, uh, that or in a young group like you and Fred Harris, the group of you would come up there, if you all could say, now, please, let's get with the caption back and let's see if there's not something we can do where we don't have to cut ourselves to pieces. And if he couldn't sell you and you're convinced that he is totally wrong, then you have to do it. Uh, I would hope you could sell him. Do you follow me? Yes, sir. It looks mighty bad to me. And one of the senators was told this morning, well, you better watch out, there's going to be a Kennedy president here. And things like that, and that's not good. And I've had about four of them call me about it, and they're upset. May I ask who's, who's, which, who's up here spreading that kind of... Well, nobody has ever approached me. That, that's what puts me, or anybody who thinks like I do, I mean, I, I'm my present position as far as that's, this particular 
issue is concerned, is one small part of it, is that if we, I think I'm in a position politically at home and, and philosophically the way I feel and, and you feel, uh, we share our, our antipathy toward the poll tax, but politically at home, I think I'm in a position where I have to make an effort on this one thing. Now, if we're defeated, then, or if it gets in there and it looks like this is going to ruin the bill, and I think right now we can't say that with, with good judgment, uh, then I'm for taking it out of there. But I think right now it would be real bad to me and my Negro communities at home if I appeared to be less than enthusiastic because I feel very strongly about it. Now, if it gets to the place where my judgment it's going to sink the ship, then Mr. President, I, uh, I learned from the man I'm talking to right now that <laughs> you've got to be able to, uh, to, to conform to what it takes to get the job done. Well, what I would hope all of you would do without any instruction from me or without even consulting me would be try to get the Attorney General and the Solicitor General, a man who drafted these laws and who uh, the authors of them and who instigated them and who started them, who are going to have to enforce them and carry them through to try to get in a room and find some basis of agreement that uh, uh, will uh, do justice to the Negro, and, and uh, I think the way I hear it, uh, there's just a question now of opinion, which one does it the best? And uh, I think if you could get to, uh, Teddy and whoever else is on the committee with you, tidings, and, and get Ketson back, get sit down with your leader and give you all his view and give it strong and then let him point out his view and then try to find some area that you can come up with. Uh, it may be a turn here, a turn there with your amendment that he could accept and he believes would be good and sound. Uh, he has no instructions or he has no uh, no um, forces that would keep them from agreeing anything that's right. He's, he's as open as you are. And I don't believe that we ought to have uh, the brilliant young senators that we got that we want to make our future out of, and a brilliant young attorney general, and we can't get together. Well, this is certainly... Uh, because it doesn't, it's not a good omen. And if they can't, and you got it down to me, and it's Bill that he doesn't want or don't like. I'm not running for office. Uh, uh, we have lots of difficulty, and I just think the time to do it is before we get so far out that we can't reason. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm willing to be bound by anything you can agree on, and I have no orders or no instructions or not even any recommendations except that as a party, it's good judgment not to become divided and not to become sectionalized and not to become uh, uh, divided up into groups. You've done more than any other to see that this differences pull together. I can't get Jim Eastland, but there's no reason why I can't uh, get you and uh, McCarthy together and uh, uh, because basically uh, and Teddy and Mondale and uh, those people believe in the same things, and uh, and Katzenbach is the champion of y'all. He's not the Johnson man that came up from Texas to be Attorney General. Every president's entitled to his lawyer. If he not, he, he ought to be, and uh, I took their lawyer because I foresaw this very problem. I foresaw that I would be charged with not being quite strong enough on civil rights. And uh, I initiated, after we got rid of the other bill, I initiated the voting rights myself. Nobody else did, no Negro leaders. I did that at the ranch in November. And I came up with the bill. And uh, we drafted the bill. Now, it's been changed, and it ought to be changed. But what changes we make, we ought to find a way where this man can stay behind us because he's got to enforce it and he's got to administer it, and he's got to execute it. And Mr. Rayburn used to say that you can get the best law in the world and a poor man to administer it and you're wrecked. Or you can get the 
worst law in the world. And a good man to administer it, and you do pretty well. So you're going to have, this man is going to have to administer it. He and John Doerr and the Solicitor General, the rest of them are going to have to decide every day and make their arguments. And uh, you and Teddy and me, we all are going to be off sleep somewhere, speaking to some barbecue. <laughs> this guy is going to have to be done. it. There's no reason why the Kennedys can't get along with Nick Katzenbach. They brought him from Yale, and they pulled him together, and he loves them, and he's loyal to them, and he's devoted to them. And, he, uh, and I'm uh, devoted to him, and he has no orders or instructions from me except do what's right. Well, the most unfortunate thing about this is that apparently there are people, and uh, what you say certainly confirms it, that are trying to, to put some of us who feel very strongly about this uh, this whole issue in a very untenable position uh, of loyalties over a situation that, as far as I'm concerned, don't exist. And I appreciate your frank discussion of that, Mr. President. What I would do is this. I have no time to fight with any Democrat. And uh, I, I particularly, you're the last one I want to. I want, I want, I want you to, uh, you represent what I want in my party and uh, the future of my party. And you're going to be doing just what I've been doing all through the years is I'm laid aside and I'm pretty well crippled up anyway now with all these problems I've got. But I do know this, that there are times when you don't like what your younger sister thinks or what your older brother says. But in the interest of your mother, you all ought to get in the room and try to find some area. Now, you just ought to do it because all of you for the Negroes and uh, uh, bear in mind that, that this man Katzenbach was Bobby's uh, top man that did all the testifying on the bill of 65 uh, uh, last year. And he's, uh, he's not, the uh, uh, last thing Bobby asked me to do was to keep him as Attorney General. I've done that. That was a very, <laughs> very, very wonderful thing and a very, uh, <laughs> so you you just uh, you just say to your boys now boys uh, let's don't get out here in front of the Republicans let Javits because he calls us racist let's get out here and find something that Nick Katzenbach will come to and if he can't sell you you sell him and just say God damn it Nick Nick you've got to administer this and you've got to execute this it doesn't do us any good to write it if you if you can't get it, make it stand up and let's get together and then get together. Well, I appreciate very much you taking time to talk to me, sir. I always will, and I'll always uh, be helpful. And I know you won't do likewise, too. And uh, the best way that you can help yourself down the road all the way through is uh, you uh, you uh, get some of your young fellows and sit down with, uh, with uh, Katzenbeck back and uh, your committee clerk and your, and your uh, counsel and and Mansfield, and you'll find some area that all of you can get on without fighting out there on the floor of the Senate. It's certainly making it a lot simpler. Just got to do that. Well, thank Bye. you very much, sir. Bye.